to share my experience with a 4x8 Harbor Freight trailer just in case someone else was either starting out or trying to wonder if, if this trailer would be a good fit for them. Uh, the first benefit of this obviously is going to be the cost. So I'm going to show you some different shots and angles while I add in the prices of everything that I purchased. Two by fours slide into these pockets and then are retained by um, a bolt and nut. To those two by fours, I attach some, I believe, five quarter planking and then onto that planking secured some fence pickets. The sign is a four foot long section of two by eight wood that's been pressure treated. I found a font that I liked online, printed out the design on paper, then used carbon paper to trace it out onto the wood, and then used a router to remove all the excess material. You can see this is a little bit raised. I drilled two holes here and then drilled two holes here in the top of an ATV loading ramp so that once the holes are lined up, three inch lag bolts can be dropped in and those are easily inserted and removed by hand. That will help keep the ramp from kicking out backwards during loading and of course there'd be another ramp there. So here you can see we have another panel, again two by fours is the base some deck board running across and then the pickets here's two handles for holding on to here is part of the fastening mechanism that will attach here i'll show you how that works It's a fairly sturdy design. The front of the trailer and the sides here are connected with angle brackets so there's not really any wiggle. Here in the back there is wiggle. But I haven't had those latches come loose any time during my travels. Right now you can see that the trailer is resting on a trailer jack and then also a, a separate jack stand. Uh, this is one of the downsides of this. It's rated for I believe 1200 pounds but I found that after several months of my 525 pound riding mower and I don't know maybe 150 pounds of equipment that was mounted vertically at the very front. That weight was enough to warp this C channel so that you'll see whenever I remove this jack stand and the weight is resting solely on the trailer jack it's going to kind of bow out because there's now a bend in this C channel. So you can see that the trailer jack, instead of standing straight plumb uh, like it did when it first installed, actually starts to kick out. Another drawback is that these tires are rated only for 55 miles an hour, so they don't recommend you drive faster than 55 miles an hour, which for most folks means no interstate. That's proven inconvenient several times, not life ending, but that's somewhat of a pain in the butt. I've currently replaced this trailer with an enclosed trailer, a 5x10 enclosed trailer that has a full fold down ramp and is much safer, much less sketchy when I'm trying 
when I'm trying to load the zero turn up. If I went slow, I didn't have any issues loading the zero turn on those ramps. What made me buy the enclosed trailer is that there were several times that after I would gotten done mowing, the ramps had been sitting in direct sunlight, um, very hot for you know 20 or 30 minutes however long I was mowing. The wheels of the mower actually slipped going up the ramps. Um, nothing happened and I was able to load it. I was able to load it safely but it did scare me enough so that I figured that um, the cheapest option which in this case was this trailer wasn't going to work for me anymore and I needed to upgrade so I had a little bit more safety and a little bit less risk of uh, damaging my equipment. I do think this is an awesome trailer. If I had to do it again, I would. But this is one of those instances where going the cheapest route can sometimes um, yield some unexpected results later on down the line that you have to deal with and spend more money to fix. So I'm still happy I did it. I'd do it again. I'm still gonna keep this as a brush trailer. It performs remarkably well as a brush trailer. It's very easy to load everything in. And then when I get to the dump, I'm able to pop that back panel off and then just yank on whatever I've loaded and it'll all come out uh, in one fell swoop if I've made sure to put some branches all along the bottom that span the length. It is a 4x8. I had, after the framing went in, I had about 44 inches of clearance. Um, so I'm riding a 36 inch lawn mower. I could possibly fit a 42 inch, but I got a 36 because I wanted to fit in the back gates. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. I'd love to answer any questions that you might have about this or if you think it'd work for you.